Hello, this is Prue and this is our weekly look at what is going on in the astrological world for the week ahead. So we'll be primarily looking from Monday, that's the 23rd of May, um, till the following Sunday. But before we do that, let's just have a sense of what is going on in the skies right now, just to remind ourselves of the themes that are going on. Because I know for myself, that when I'm aware of what's going on in the skies, when I know what the planets are doing, it can really help me navigate my life with more ease. I have a more of a, a deeper understanding why some parts of my life I'm wanting to go 100 miles an hour and the other parts of my life that I'm having to sort of go back to kind of close any karmic loops in many ways. So the more that I can have an understanding of, ah, oh, that makes sense, the easier life can be. The more it can make sense, I can join those jigsaw puzzles up so let's just have a think. What's the backdrop to our lives at the moment? Well, one of the big main backdrops is that we are in Gemini season. That started on Saturday. Um, and so what does that mean? Well, we've just spent a month in Taurus season. So that means the sun has been in the sign of Taurus. And if we think the sun is about how we radiate our energy levels, our uniqueness into the world, it's putting a spotlight in many ways um, on that Taurian part of our chart. And Taurus is interested in the practicalities of life. What can we feel? What can we smell? Um, what's real in many ways? And I often think about whenever I think of Taurus, I have that sense of that organic growth. You know, I can plant a, a tree and however fast I want it to um, grow, um, it's just going to do its natural thing. It's, there's an organic sort of natural cycle um, that Taurus has an ability to tap into. Um, I'm very much aware that my daughter um, is very, well, she has a lot of Taurus in her chart. Her son is in Taurus, her Mars is in Taurus, her Venus is in Taurus. Um, so there is that sense that she doesn't want to be pushed. You know, there is a sense that she needs to do things in her own time. And I may think that she's a, a slight hoarder. Um, she's nine, just turned nine. Um, but for many ways, that's a stability for her. What is it that she can have around her that she can touch that's real in many ways? So that's the energy that we have with Taurus. There's a focus on the, 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 the sensual touch of life. Um, now, when we move into Gemini, which we did on Saturday, we're now in Gemini season. That is all to do with the mind. It has a lighter quality. It's more um, sociable. It's more inclusive. Um, it's more curious about life. Now, I'm aware that, you know, I'm thinking, gosh, do I sound like I'm a real kind of pro-Gemini season? I'm aware for myself, my own personal experiences. I have my Mercury, how I communicate is in Gemini, and my moon is in Gemini. So there's probably more of a, an ease and familiarity when we move into Gemini season. It matches that kind of that sense of curiosity that I have about life. Um, how I speak can be in a very Gemini way. I can be very scattered my husband would say or um i've got a lot going on in my mind and i think what we have to um, appreciate with gemini season is that there is this sense of wanting knowledge wanting to connect wanting to communicate wanting to be around people um but we need to ground that energy because what i see time and time again with clients is that if we don't have an outlet a channel for this the mind in many ways because things speed up the mind speeds up is that it can turn to anxiety we can just get that restless brain we can't switch it off in the some ways so it is important if we have Gemini season is to focus what do we want to put all those thoughts into and so that we don't go into that kind of like jittery um uh disaligned central nervous system in some ways so that is our, our kind of our understanding is as we move through Gemini season is that we may feel that we're, we're our, our mind is speeding up but we also have to understand that the ruler, Mercury rules Gemini, is currently in retrograde. Now, I have spoken about that in my last videos when we look at what's going on when Mercury went into retrograde. But just a quick reminder that when a planet is in retrograde from our Earth position, it's going backwards rather than forwards. So it asks us to go back over that area of our life that it's currently traveling over. It's a chance to review, redefine, um, re-examine um, a particular part. So sometimes there's something that hasn't been closed in some ways. So it's really important that when we have a, a retrograde planet is that we honor that sense of going backwards. It isn't always the best time to make big commitments because when a planet is retrograde, it's closer to Earth, its symbolism is more um, closely felt in many ways. 
but there's also that sense that the energy isn't quite stable. By the time Mercury goes forward again, beginning of June, we may feel quite differently about a subject. So if we've made a big commitment to it, it's not always um, in our best interest. Now, if we're making a big um, commitment during Mercury retrograde that's connected to things that we've set in place, that we've gone back over and we've recommitted, that can have a different energy. And I'm also aware that we live in a world that, you know, is fast and we can't always make decisions. Matt, my husband used to sell cars and I, whenever Mercury retrograde, Mercury is about travel as well. I'd always say, oh, no, don't sell any cars during Mercury retrograde. It's not going to have a, a fortuitous result. And he was like, yeah, but I live in the real world. And, you know, and Mercury retrograde, it spends three weeks every um, three times a year in that. So it's just about understanding that we do live in a world that we can't necessarily pause everything. But it's always good to go back over all those um, contracts to really um, have a plan B if we if we can, but also just um, be more diligent um, with, it, with what we are committing ourselves to. So Mercury is very much a theme because on, I'm just going to check my notes, on Monday, um, basically Mercury going backwards, it moves from the sign of Gemini and it goes back into the sign of Taurus. So basically the last time it was in um, Taurus, Mercury, was um, April the 11th to April the 29th. So what you may notice in your life is there's something that happened around that time where you may be going back over, you may be closing something that hasn't been completed, um, you may go back over it and you may get a, a different result, it may be more fortuitous um, in so in some way but it's just about um, understanding that Mercury which is in Gemini is going to be going backwards into Taurus so there is that sense of if Taurus is about um, uh, building something that's made to last you may be going back over something that you've committed to making it more sustainable in some ways and if we were just to sum this up in a nutshell it's just about our communication um, our connection with others we may on some level be pulled to re-examine um, something that was going on um, at the end of April. The second thing, I'm just checking my notes, is on Wednesday, and that is when Mars moves into Aries. Um, Mars is the planet of action, leadership, assertion, it wants to move forward. Now it's been in the sign of Pisces for the last um, six months, so my brain uh, had a little bit of a Mercury retrograde moment, I lost my words. So it usually, Mars usually spends six months in a sign. And when it's in Pisces, it is very much connected to compassion, sensitivity. It's not naturally a comfortable place for Mars to be in. It's a very, Mars is a fire sign and in, in a water sign in, in Pisces, it's difficult to move forward because there is that sense of care and connection to others. You may find yourself um, just sort of sticking around in your comfort zone. So on, um, um, Wednesday in the early hours where Mars moves into Aries there's this real sense of kind of like surging moving forward impatience restlessness things that we may have been letting slide in some ways we're like gosh I want to get it done now there's a sense of spontaneity Mars um rules Aries so it's actually very very comfortable in this sign so there is this sense of a uh, kind of re vigor in some way so look at where um, that is in your chart look at the Aries part of your chart are you feeling more restless are you feeling more spontaneous are you feel more com confident in taking risks now your Aries part of your um, chart that's when you look at your natal chart and you see what house is Aries ruling has also been activated because we've got Jupiter currently in Aries. Jupiter is all about um, luck, optimism, confidence. So there is that real sense of um, uh, um, confidence, optimism, hope when it comes to that chart. We also want to include Scorpio in that because Mars also rules Scorpio. So look at those two areas of your life. Where, what part of your life is Scorpio ruling? What part of your life is Aries ruling? And just know on some level, there'll be more of an urge to move forward in some ways. Now, the, this um, Mars goes into Aries every two years. So the last time Mars was in Aries was actually the whole of the end of 2020. It was in there for six months. This was really, really unusual because in the middle of it, Mars went retro grade. So that was quite an uncomfortable place for a lot of people that had very strong airy signature. There was that sense at the end of 2020 of just being held back with Mars going to retrograde. Mars is not comfortable in that retrograde sign because Mars is all about moving forward. So it's interesting. Have a think about what was going on in my life um, for that second half of 2020. What was I really passionate about? What do I want to move forward? And just know that on some level, we may be having going back to echoes of that. We may not be doing it in such an obsessional way that we were doing it the first time around 
time. But just know that because Jupiter is now in Aries, we may get um, luck in that area. We may get a completely different sense of moving things forward. They may be more um, uh, easy in some ways than they were a couple of years ago when we didn't have Jupiter helping Aries along. So this is a really positive um, uh, opportunity to, um, to leap forward in that area of our chart. Um, even, you know, bearing in mind that nothing is quite simple and, and laid out, we have got Mercury in retrograde. So on one hand, we've got this sense of wanting to go back and, and finish, but we've also got this sense of Mars moving forward and wanting to get things going, and it will be there for the next six months. The final thing I really want to talk about is happening on Saturday, and that is Venus is moving into Taurus. Now, Mars is um, all about action, assertion, leadership. Venus is all about pleasure, harmony, relationships, balance. Um, what do we enjoy in life? Now, it's really interesting that Mars is in its rulership. Mars rules Aries. Venus rules Taurus. So again, we've got our relationship planets very much coming home. They're very much on their sort of home turf. They understand the rules. So there's an ease and a comfort. And with Venus going into Taurus, there is that sense of looking at the Taurian part of our charts and it's being highlighted. There's a positivity that's coming in. There's an ease and a flow. So what is it that brings us pleasure in our life? What is it do we really enjoy? Um, how can we prioritize that um, in some way? Because Venus is um, interested in bringing more flow and harmony. Um, I'm just thinking anything else I want to say about Venus moving into Taurus. Um, it's just a beautiful opportunity to enjoy the delights of the physical. If we think about Taurus is very much connected to our body, this is giving us a real focus on looking after, bringing pleasure to our body in a way that we might not have had because when Venus has just been in Aries, it's more of a kind of a warrior queen energy. It's more restless and spontaneous. This is a chance for us to slow down. It's actually very soothing for our central nervous system to be when Venus moves into Taurus because everything kind of like realigns in some way. So have a look. What, what part of your um, chart does Taurus rule? Um, and how can you bring more pleasure? How can you bring an improvement? How can you bring um, an upgrade into that area that is very much connected to the tangible, the physical in some way? So that's our overview of what's going on for the week ahead. Now, next week, I'll be talking about this new moon in Gemini that's happening. It's not an eclipse new moon, so we can all take a breath um, and know that it's not part of this very intense eclipse season, which is all about big ending, new beginning, quantum leaps in our lives. It can feel very intense. Whereas this new moon in Gemini, which is happening next Monday, the 30th, has a very different appeal. But I'll be talking about that next week. So do join me. And my final um, little message is if you are interested in understanding um, where these planets are in your chart, um, I would really recommend my big three program. It's where we'll look at the sun, the moon, the rising sign, the three big major players in our life um, wanting to get our intention. And I know for when I work with clients, there is a sense of, but I don't quite understand when you talk about, look at the Taurus part of your chart, look at the Aries chart, that will all be covered. It's three weeks, it's online, I've got two spaces left. We work in a really small group. I promise you cannot get behind. If you're interested in finding out any more information about this, just ping me a message. It's my last big three for the year. So um, I would really recommend it because we really get to spend time. I really get to delve deeply into your chart and so will you. You'll have different understandings about yourself, but you'll also be able to understand how they are for people closest to you in your life. So I'm wishing you a wonderful week ahead. Enjoy this beautiful Gemini energy, you know, feel that fire that's coming with Mars moving into Aries, Taurus moving into um, Venus moving into Taurus, and that real sense that in some ways we're going on to home ground. We're going to be playing um, for our strengths because Venus and Mars, and we've got Jupiter in that mix in Aries, is giving us a real push forward, a real confidence to start taking risks and saying, yeah, this is the world I want to create. This is the life I want to create. And actually, I don't have to wait for the right time to do it. The right time is right now.